Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to study the design of dog-legged staircase. In the previous video, we have seen how to calculate the effective span, what all different types of loads they are going to come on the staircase and how to calculate it. Now in this video, we will try to design one staircase that is dog-legged staircase. In the next video, we are going to see open well staircase. So let us start now. Uh, let us take this problem. Design a dog leg staircase for an office building in a room measuring 2.8 by 5.8 meter. So this is the room dimension. Clear vertical distance between the floor is 3.6 meters. So for example, if this is a ground floor and this is a first floor. So distance between these two is 3.6 meters. Between this we have to provide the staircase. Width of the flight is to be 1.25 meters. Uh, we have a live load of 3 kN per meter square. We have to design a staircase and we have to do the detailing of the reinforcement. So for that we have to use M20 grade of concrete and FE415 steel. Then next is assume stairs are supported on 230mm walls at the end of the outer edges of the landing slab. So this is also very important so as to calculate the effective span. So if you see it is supported on 230mm wall at the end of outer edge of the landing slab. So if you see this is the landing slab we have, this is the landing slab we have. So at the outer edge of the landing slab we are having a wall which is of 230mm thick. So the support is, it is support at the end of the landing beam. So let us try to design a dog leg staircase now. So let us select a riser as 150mm and tread as 300mm. So they have given the total height as 3.6 meters. So what we do, we will provide two flights. So this is first flight, this is second flight. That is from here we will have one flight and we will have second flight. So this is ground floor, this is first floor for example. So what will be this height? So that has to be calculated. So what we can do, this total height is 3.6 divided by 2. 3.6 divided by 2 means this will be 1.8 meters. So height of the one flight will be 1.8 meters. So let us try to calculate how many number of risers we are going to have it in this height that is 1.8 meters. So 1.8 meters that is 1800 mm divided by riser is 150. Divided by 150 if you do we will get 12 risers. So number of threads required will be 12 minus of 1 that is equal to 11 numbers. So width of the stair is 1.25 meters and minimum landing width is required will be like 1.25 meters. So we will provide 1.25 meters landing and this width of this stair as 1.25 meters. Then next let us try to calculate the effective span. So how do we calculate the effective span? Effective span will be center to center distance of the support. So this distance is 3.3 meters plus uh, if you take uh, we are going to have what you can say 12 uh, what you can say risers and 11 treads. 11 treads we have. So 11 multiplied by 300. So therefore 3.3 meters we are going to have. So this going will be 3.3 meters. Then next is width of the landing. This is 1.25 meters. This is 1.25 meters. Then next is uh, in this direction it is 2.8 meters. So width of one flight is 1.25, 1.25. So remaining we have to have. So effective span will be center to center distance of the walls. So center to center means from this face, from the center till this center. It is 3.3 plus 1.25 here plus 1.25 here. Here 0.23 by 2, here 0.23 divided by 2. 
so therefore 1.25 that is landing slab plus going 3.3 plus 1.25 plus 0.23 by 2 on left side plus 0.23 by 2 on right side that is 0.23 itself so therefore effective span will be 6.03 meters then next is we have to calculate the waste slab thickness so we can take it as uh, 50 mm per meter width of span so as our span is 6 meters so 50 mm per meter that is 50 multiplied by 6 so it will be 300 mm so thickness of the waste slab uh, that is capital D we can take it as 300 mm so therefore effective depth of the waste slab will be equal to overall depth minus the effective cover that is 300 minus 30 we can have. so that will be equal to 270 mm next is we have to calculate the loads coming on the staircase one is we have to take the weight of the slab next is weight of the steps next will be finishing load live load and we have to take the total load so first let us try to calculate now waste weight of the waste slab so already we have seen this formula d into square root of t square plus r square divided by t multiplied by the density so d is nothing but the thickness of the waste slab that is 0.3 t is nothing but tread r is nothing but riser tread is 0.3 riser is 0.15 divided by t is 0.3 multiplied by 25 so therefore weight of the waste slab will be equal to 8.38 kilo newton meters then next is weight of steps so weight of the step all uh, so half uh, riser into tread multiplied by 25 divided by t so r is riser t is tread so 0 0.15 0 0.3 divided by 0 0.3 multiplied by 25 so therefore weight of the step will be equal to 1.875 kilo newton meter the next is we'll have finishing load uh, we'll assume 0 0.6 kilo newton per meter square live load as 3 km per meter square so we can have the total uh, dead load that is waste of weight, weight of waste slab 8.38 weight of steps that is 1.875 8.38 1.875 1 finishing load that is 0 0.6 so if you are going to add up it will be 10.86 kN per meter so live load is 3 kN per meter square so if you add up this dead load and live load total load w will be equal to 10.86 plus 3 we have to have 13.86 kilo newton per meter so we will make it factored load w that is equal to 13.86 multiplied by 1.5 so that will be equal to 20.8 kilo newton per meter then next is uh, we will try to calculate the load on the landing so waste slab thickness that is 0.3 multiplied by 25 so that will be equal to 7.5 finishing load 0.6 and live load as 3 so if you are going to add up it will be 11.1 kN per meter so factored load will be multiplied by 1.5 so we are, going to, we are going to get it around 16.65 kN per meter so now this is the open uh, the dog leg staircase we have so based on that uh, udl uh, let us try to calculate the bending moment and shear force so now this is the total span what we have total span that is 3.3 plus 1.25 is the width of the landing plus 0.23 by 2 that is for the wall so here also 1.25 plus 0.23 by 2 that will be equal to 1.365 so we are load on the landing slab so landing slab is up to a distance of 1.365 up to that we are going to have a load of 16.65 kN per meter then next so for going it will be 20.8 kN per meter again on the landing slab it will be 6.16.65 kN per meter so based on this loading let us try to calculate the bending moment and shear force so let us assume this as point A and B so therefore react so as to calculate the bending moment and shear first let us try to calculate the reaction that is RA and RP so if you see the loading it is symmetric so therefore what we can do first uh, let us try to calculate the reaction 
so as it is symmetric we'll try to calculate what is the total downward load so that divided by 2 means we'll, we are going to get the reaction that is RA and RB as it is symmetric so therefore we have to have the same reaction that is RA will be equal to RP so what happens is that due to symmetry RA is equal to RP that is equal to total load divided by 2 so let us try to calculate now what is the total load that is equal to first let us try to start from left that is 16.65 multiplied by distance is 1.365 this is nothing but the landing load plus 20.8 multiplied by distance that is 3.3 20.8 multiplied by 3.3 then next is 16.65 multiplied by 1.365 so if you add up you will get answer as 114.09 kN this is the total downward load what we have which is going downwards so this divided by 2 that will be equal to RA will be equal to RB that is equal to 114.09 divided by 2 that will be equal to 57 kilo newtons now we have calculated the reactions now let us try to calculate the moment so moment will be maximum at the center so let us try to calculate the moment at the center of this loading so moment at the mid span that is equal to now first let us try to go from the left side this is RA into distance load into distance we have that is RA that is nothing but 57 multiplied by distance so distance will be uh, what you can say uh, 1.36 for you plus 3.3 divided by 2 3.3 is nothing but total distance here divided by 2 so if you add up uh, we will get answer as 3.015 57 multiplied by 3.015 then next is uh, this used to create clockwise movement therefore positive we have then next uh, this loading it is going to have negative uh, it will create anti-clockwise movement so 16.65 we have this is the load multiplied by distance so distance will be this uh, first uh, let us try to calculate the total load that is 1.365 multiplied by distance from this center till this center so therefore that will be equal to this is 1.365 divided by 2 we have plus this 3.3 is a total divided by 2 3.3 divided by 2 so due to this it will be over minus of this loading in now this loading we have that is uh, it is going to create anti-clockwise movement therefore negative so load is 20.8 multiplied by distance from here till here so total is 3.3 divided by 2 this is nothing but the total loading we have multiplied by the distance now center of this till the center of the point so therefore this is 3.3 divided by 4 so therefore if you are going to add up all these things we are going to get bending moment as 90.54 kN meter so for that moment uh, we will try to provide the reinforcement now so before providing that let us try to calculate the limiting moment so as moment required coming is 90.54 depth is 270 mm so limiting moment that is 0.138 fck bd square we have 0.138 fck is 20 b we have to take it as 1 meter and d is 270 so limiting moment is 201 so our moment which is coming is 90.54 so therefore this is mu is less than mu alive so therefore we can design it as a singly reinforced section then next for this moment let us try to calculate the reinforcement 0.5 into fck divided by f of i into 1 minus square root of 1 minus 4.6 into mu divided by fck b d square multiplied by b into d so 0.5 we have fck is 20 f of y is 415 1 minus of square root of 1 minus of 4.6 mu is 90.54 into 10 to 6 divided by fck is 20 b is 1000 and d is 270 multiplied by b into d that is 1000 into 270 so if we calculate we are going to get answer as 1008 mm square so let us assume a 16 mm dia bar so for this let us try to calculate the spacing that is area of 1 bar divided by area required multiplied by 1000 so area of 1 bar will be as we are using 16 mm dia bar 
फाइव बाई फोर इंटू सिक्सटीन स्क्वायर डिवाइड बाई थाउजेंड वन जीरो जीरो एट मल्टीप्लाइड बाई थाउजेंड सो यू गेटिंग आंसर एज वन नाइन्टी नाइन एम एम सो विल राउंड इट ऑफ टू समॉट लेसर वैल्यू दैट इज वन एटी एम एम सो देर फॉर प्रोवाइड सिक्सटीन एम एम डाया बार्स एट वन एटी एम एम सेंटर टू सेंटर सो दिस विल बी द मेन रेनफोर्समेंट देन नेक्स्ट लेटेस्ट ट्राई टू कैलकुलेट द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन स्टील So we'll provide the minimum reinforcement that is 0.12 percentage of gross area that is 0.12 divided by 100 multiplied by B into D. This is the gross area. So therefore, reinforcement required will be 360 mm square. So if you assume 10 mm dia bars, so spacing will be area of one bar that is pi by 4 to 10 square divided by area required 360 multiplied by 1000. So we'll be getting answer around 218 mm square. So let us provide ten mm dia bars about two hundred mm center to center lower than this. Uh, after this, let us try to check for the shear. Usually, this is going to pass in shear. So shear that is equal to fifty seven kilo newton. So let us try to calculate tau v. Tau v is equal to v u divided by b into d. That is fifty seven into ten is to three divided by b is thousand. D is two seventy. So tau v will be equal to point two one newton per mm square. So that has to be checked with tau c max, that is 2.8 newton per mm square. So therefore, it is safe. So we need not revise the section itself. Then next is AST provided is that is uh, we have provided uh, two not uh, what can say one multi divided by 180 spacing multiplied by thousand. So AST provided is uh, 1116 mm square. So this 201 is nothing but area of a 16 mm dia bar. Area of steel uh, uh, bar provided divided by the spacing multiplied by thousand. We are going to get the AST provided. So let us try to calculate the percentage of steel provided. That is AST. It is one 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 six divided by B into D. That is thousand into two seventy multiplied by hundred. So it will be around point four one three percentage. So based on this, if you calculate uh, percentage of steel. We can calculate tau c value from IS four fifty six. That is point four four newton per mm square. Already we have seen many a times uh, how to calculate this tau c. You can refer same previous problems. So based on that, k p value will be equal to one. So k into tau c will be equal to point four four newton per mm square. So this has to be compared with this tau b value. So k into tau c is point four four, which is greater than point two one. So therefore, this is Safe in shear. So now we have checked for shear. So uh, let us try to do the detailing. So you can see now, as this is the dog lift staircase, we have designed one flight. So another flight also it will remain same. So same reinforcement we are going to provide for that flight also. So if you see the slab is going to bend in this way. So therefore, main reinforcement it is going to be provided. Longitudinal, you can see here now the line. What we are seeing, this will be the main reinforcement, and perpendicular to that transverse reinforcement we have that is nothing but the distribution steel. So for main reinforcement, if you see it is 10 mm dia about 200 mm center to center. So you can see this is going to go to the top. So from here this will come to the bottom. From bottom it will come at the top. So this is nothing but you can see here the circles what you are seeing that is nothing but the distribution steel. So here also we provide the distribution steel that is top, that is a line as well as the circle what we are seeing here. So riser is one fifty, tread is three hundred mm. So this thickness of the waste slab is nothing but three hundred mm. So landing width is one point two five, going is three point three, landing is one point two five. So in this way detailing. Has to be done. So what uh, you can think is, so the line what we are seeing, this is nothing but the main reinforcement, and the circles what we are seeing, that is nothing but the distribution steel. And the slab is spanning longitudinally. So this you can take it as a reference, and you can solve as an assignment question.